Hello Internet, so nice to see you. This is Tommaso Zilio of MusicTheory4Guitar.com and we are here for another one of our live theory talk. If you are in the chat or in the comment, we are live on both YouTube and Facebook right now. If you are in the, if you're there attending, write something in the chat or in the comment. I want say hi, okay? I want to see who's there. I want to see how many old faces we have and how many new faces we have. So write something in the chat if you're there. Good. So. Today, we're going to do a chat, a live theory chat, and I wanted to do this chat for a while, because usually we take this, we take a, a big topic in those chats, okay? Usually we take something like, I don't know, how to arrange a song or how to understand theory or how to, the history of theory and this kind of thing, but today we're doing something completely different. So today we are going to go, I'm going to go with my, uh, hall, with my guest here, and we're going to go through several of the tricks we like, several of the scales, the chords, the chord progression, essentially tricks, stuff that is immediately usable that we like. If you want all the little secrets that you learn with uh, when you have a lot of experience as musicians, so it's gonna be it's gonna be a candy factory today, okay? No no big meal, but lots of small applicable tips that you can use in your music immediately and i'm sure every one of you is going to find one or two or three or dozens of tricks that you are going to like let me say hi to a few people here we have rafi from puerto rico hi uh garbage content i hope that's not your real name uh jeff daniel from nigeria mark from ohio uh, alexandra from i have no idea where you are from <laughs> okay and uh, then from Canada, Cam Captain Tomato and the crew. This should have been my name. I'm Tomato, technically. Okay, from Canada, Canary Island, John from South Wales, and we have more and more of you. Great. Thank you guys for coming. Always nice to see you there. I see a lot of new faces today. Great, great. Anyway, let me introduce our guest today. They call him the Breakthrough Guitar Specialist, and it's true, because every time I see this guy taking a student, the student gets a breakthrough in a, in a very short amount of time. It's like this guy, this guy has the ability of finding all the small problems and fixing them, okay? And he's also a teacher of teachers, as I, as I call him, because... Uh, Practically most of the guitar teachers I know have been under him <laughs> at one time or another, and you can totally see. Um, you can totally see it. I mean, it's people who have been studying with this guy have become good, great guitar teachers. Okay, who am I talking about? I'm talking about Maestro Tom Hess. Welcome, Tomas. Thank you, Tommaso. How are you doing today? Very good. Fantastic. Very good. Okay, so. So today we want to, want to talk a little bit about our favorite uh, musical snippets, as I was saying before. So I, I know you have several of them. I've been I've been knowing you for more than ten years now. <laughs> Every time I, that I come and see you or I meet you, you have like a new idea and a new idea and a new idea and a new idea. So I know you have several. So and and I also know I'm gonna I'm gonna tell this to our to our um, audience here that. Uh, we're going to use more than one guitar today because some guitar sounds best, for, for, a bet, better sound for some things you're going to do and some other guitar better for another thing. So since I see you have the distortion guitar on with you, that's the distortion guitar, right? <laughs> okay. I'm going to ask you first, what are your favorite scales? Because I know you're going to use distortion with that because you are a geniaholic like, <laughs> like, like I am every now and then. So, so Tomas. Let, let, let's start with your very favorite scale. I think I know which one it is, but I want to hear you. Well, my if I had to choose only one, and that would be very hard. By the way, I just have to say I'm feeling very inferior to you because uh, I'm very small in comparison. Now, now, now I feel a little bit closer to your level. All right. So I uh, my favorite scale, if I had to pick one, would probably be the fifth mode of melodic minor. The scale is sometimes called Mixolydian flat six. There are other names for it as well. I think you, I think I've seen you sometimes call this Aeolian dominant, correct? That the term you use. So unlike uh, the standard modes, Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, there are, where there are standardized names, there are no standardized names for the seven modes of harmonic minor or melodic minor. 
uh, other than the first mode of each chord, of course. Uh, but essentially, the melodic, the fifth mode of melodic minor is basically a, a and I'll play some moment. It's basically a major scale for the first five notes in a minor scale for the top several notes. So if we write this out like this, the formula goes like this. It's all these numbers I'm going to write out relate to the major scale. So in a fifth mode of melodic minor, we have one, two, three, four, five. And then we have a flatted sixth, a flatted seventh, and then, of course, the root again. So if you notice, these five notes, whoop, there we go, these five notes that are underlined are the same as the major scale. But these five notes from the top are the same as a natural minor scale. So we have major here and minor here, okay? And it, it makes for a very interesting... Uh, sound. So if I play, uh, if I play the be, scale be, before you I go ahead, Thomas, since I know that some of the, our audience do not understand the numbers, and I, I'm gonna show you these, you know, using <laughs> those big words I don't understand, and I want to keep these uh, comprehensible for everybody. Could I know you're gonna play in a specific key? Sure. Could you spell out the notes you're playing so people can replicate? Sure, that? of course. Yeah, I, I was gonna do it in E, but I'll do it in C to make things easier. So if we start here on the eighth fret of the sixth string, okay, if you, I, I play my scales three notes per string. So if I played a major scale, the first seven notes would be this, or first eight notes. Okay, so the notes here, the letter names are C, D, E, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Now that's not the fifth mode of melodic minor, that's just the major scale, that is C major. OK, if you're familiar with the piano, it would be all the white keys on the piano, starting on C and ending on C, all white keys, and you'd have a C major scale. OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the sixth and the seventh, sixth note and the seventh note from this C major scale, and we're going to flat those. That means we're going to simply play them one fret lower on the guitar, OK, lower in sound, OK? So here's our scale. The first five notes are the same. One, two, three, four, five. Then six would normally be here. It would be A, but we're going to play it as A flat. Fret 11, string five. Then seven would normally be the B note, ninth fret of string four. But we're going to flat that note and make it the... Eighth fret of string four. So this would be B flat. Okay, so all together we've got C, D, E, F, G, A flat, B flat, and then C. And it's really cool because the the flatted sixth note in particular, in this case, if we play it, in, if this is C, this note is, would become A flat. When we play this note, it's very dramatic. Okay, it's it's got a very uh, dramatic sound to it. So I'll just goof around here. I'm I'm just improvising, just making this up. Okay, on the spot. So I'm first thing I'll do is I'll outline kind of the sound of the C major triad, the C major chord. So we have the nice, typical, you know, kind of happy sounding C major. Okay, pretty typical, right? But now when we add in the, the A flat, the flat at six, That note, that A flat right here, to me, that sounds very painful. 
Okay, there's a lot of uh, it's a lot of drama there. It's a lot of pain on that note. Now you don't when you think about major C major or any major chord, you don't associate that with pain or suffering in some way. But when you flat that sixth over that chord. There's a flat seven. There's the flat six. There's five, four, three, two, one. Flat six, flat seven, five, one. So that I love that sound. It's it's uh, it, it's just very emotional uh, that that sound with the flatted sixth and the flatted seventh. So all you do in any key, you take um, you take the major scale and you flat six and seven. Now, if you are familiar with uh, some of the modes, Lydian and Mixolydian, if you know the Mixolydian scale you'll notice that this looks very much like a Mixolydian scale because the Mixolydian scale contains the notes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and flat 7 and 8. The only difference between this, fifth mode of melodic minor, and Mixolydian is this one note. Okay, If you played C Mixolydian, the Mixolydian mode starting on C, You'd have all of these same notes, except this would be A, it would not be A flat. Everything else would be the same. So this, this mode, fifth mode of melodic minor, is sometimes referred to as mixolydian with a flatted sixth or mixolydian flat six. Okay. It's a it's a very, very cool sound. Good. Well, it's one of my favorite scales too, and I knew you were going there. <laughs> so uh, I have a, have a few questions in the chat. I'd like to fill them immediately. Um, but uh, the first one is that is this one about uh, does the flat goes before the number or after the number? So that's one thing I've noticed too is that when we write the letter, the letter names the flat and the sharp go after the letter. When we write the numbers, typically. Most English-speaking people put the flat before the number like you did, you do, but some um, Latin language people like Italian, French, sometimes they put the flat after the number. I, I don't think it's a big thing. I just want to address the fact that I don't think Thomas made a mistake on this. <laughs> okay. but Yeah, in, in English, it would be written the way you say it. You would say flat six. You don't say six flat. I mean, you could say six flat, and everybody would know what you're talking about. But generally, when you speak English, you would say flat six, flat seven, sharp 11, sharp nine, whatever it is. So it's it's indicated in the order you would say the words, flat six, flat seven. But if you wrote it the other way, it would, to me, it would just look a little strange, but it, would, it wouldn't be wrong. Yeah, I, I think it's, it's kind of a... It's kind of a minor point. Um, here I have an interesting one, and it's... Uh, the question is, does Tom write full song in that mode, or just likes to use it in certain section of a song? Super great question. Uh, thanks for asking this, Mark. Uh, I see Mark Welsh, and I for, for a moment, it's very small. I thought it said Mike Walsh. <laughs> and no, that would Mike be Walsh, another one. <laughs> this question, Mike Walsh. Okay, uh, great question. Thanks for asking, Mark. Um, the answer is you could do either. Uh, for me personally, I tend to use it in sections of, of songs, usually not the entire song, although you could. Um, the, the challenge here is that with this scale, you lose some options, harmonic options, because you're going to have two diminished chords instead of one diminished, you're going to have more, more diminished chords. Okay, so you're really only going to have four chords that are not diminished or augmented. Okay, you're going to have two major chords, you're going to have two minor chords, and that's all you got. Okay, so you not that you couldn't use those other chords, but um, 
it's it's um, it's just harder to use harmonically. Okay, not impossible, but just more challenging. Okay, so let me, uh, if you don't mind, Tommaso, you'll have to mute yourself to avoid an echo, if you don't mind. And I'm just, just, playing... just, just before you play, I want to say some one thing to add to the sure. audience because I guess I see some questions. And uh, right now, guys, we're working on scale, so we're gonna see some soloing. But later today in these in these chat, we're gonna also talk about chords, so and chord progression. So if you if if you guys think the scales are a bit above your head. Hang, hang on it, okay, hang on. In, in a few minutes, we're gonna go also on course and that's gonna be a bit more comprehensible if you've never seen scales. But that said, scales are just a set of notes. So if you play the notes C, D, E, F, G, A flat, B flat, you get everything that Tomas is doing right now, okay? So not really, it's, it's not rocket science, okay? <laughs> Very good. I'm gonna mute myself so Tomas can play whatever he wants to play right now. <laughs> Yeah, thanks. And exact, Tommaso is exactly right um, that later on today we'll do some chords. And uh, if if you're if you don't know a lot about music theory, or if this looks like some you know Cyrillic letters or Greek or something to you, don't worry. Um, you know we're gonna we'll do some chords that are really cool, uh, fairly easy to play, and I think everyone should be able to play these. But the, but they're unusual. They're not the chords you're likely playing on a day-to-day -day basis but when when we show them to you i think that you'll i hope that you'll really like them and uh, as much as i do if you like them even half as much as i do you're gonna like this stuff a lot all right so i'm gonna what i'm gonna do here i'm play a little backing track uh this kind of gets towards mark's question um i hope that the you guys will hear this okay let's take a look here I'm just going to improvise over this moment. Okay. So hopefully you guys are hearing that. If you're not hearing it, give me a thumbs down in the chat. Then I'll know you can't hear it. So this is E, fifth mode of melodic minor on E. So that means that this is E, okay? So they get a little flavor there over a track. And that track is basically just an E chord, okay, with a C note sometimes added. Sometimes you'll hear an F sharp in there. Sometimes there's a C, okay? So that gives you the flavor over really just one chord of the melodic, fifth mode of melodic minor. All right, Tommaso, I'm done with that. If you want to come on back. Sure, I am. Okay. I see a lot of good questions in the chat that I don't think we can address literally all of them because some of them are really long to address. But guys, what I'm going to do here, all the questions we don't answer right now, I'm going to screenshot and do videos on that because some of those are very good questions, but are a bit off topic from what you're doing today. I mean, we, we, we can't really go from the beginning on how we do model changes and apply these to songs. But anyway, um, one thing I wanted to address, actually, which is not a theory question, and it was asked, and I was noticed myself, too, is that uh, you pick so the strings so strongly and you vibrate them so much. 
So we're, people are guessing essentially what, what kind of strings are you using for not breaking them? <laughs> because, um, so. Yeah, I'm, I'm just using GHS boomers, 9 to 42, nothing special. Um, un unfortunately, this particular guitar uh, can't handle, bend I, I wasn't bending anything more than a whole step. Uh, sometimes the vibrato is very wide and thick, but it wasn't more than a whole step. On this guitar, if I bend the high E string more than a step and a half, the high E string will break. On my, uh, my, my carbon guitars or my Yamaha guitar behind me, I can go up two and a half steps or even three steps, which is difficult, and the strings won't break. Um, so there's something with the saddle piece here that string breaks right here all the time when you go beyond a step and a half. But most of the time, we're not going beyond a step and a half. But it's just GHS nines. That's all it is. Just boomers. That, 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 that's all. Yeah, because yeah. people expect to use something like 13 or something to, so to get that thick tone. I mean, no, it's just normal. <laughs> it, yeah. it, it's, it's, it's normal strings, only played, picking them strong so the tone comes out nice and with a big vibrato. That's the thing. Yeah, there's it. Yeah, there's nothing special about the strings or the. I'm just I'm using a black star, a little practice amp like that big. It's a black star stereo twenty V two. It's just a little practice amp. It's nothing special here for these for these videos. It's not like you know big professional amp or anything. That's it. It is directly into that amp. That's it. There's nothing else. There's no pedal. Nothing else. And. Uh, they were asking if you can use this scale over a dominant 7 flat 13, which, and the answer is obviously yes. Actually, it is the scale to be used over that chord because it's yes. practically the note of the chord. Okay, it's uh, if you if you guys don't know what a dominant 7 flat 13 is, it, make a chord with the note of this scale. Just play the main triad at the seventh at the flat 13. That's the chord. <laughs> okay, so you're practically replaying the very same note over that chord. There is nothing. There, there, there is nothing strange, essentially. It's just the right scale for this. It, this is the chord for the scale. That's the scale for the chord, no more, no less. Just clarifying all this. And ooh, and um, people are asking, where did you find that backing track? <laughs> I made it. <laughs> Which is what everybody should do, okay? Because uh, I see a lot of people chasing backing tracks around the, around the YouTube and. Uh, Guys, make your own backing track. It's faster, honestly. Rather than searching hours for the perfect backing track, open Logic, Cubase, whatever, put down a little bit of a drum track or anything. You made this backing track with, with Guitar Pro, I think. Only. I mean, this is, yeah, there's no real instruments there. It's all just Guitar Pro. That's it. <laughs> there, I mean, I, you know, I didn't record any real guitars. There's no real bass. It's just Guitar Pro. That, that's it. It's the whole, I created the track in about 10 minutes. Oh, 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. And people are asking, I don't understand, understand this question, but maybe you can help me. What about the pentatonic shape of the miscellaneous flat six scale? And I don't think it's, a, it's not a pentatonic. It's a full seven note scale, period. You can, you can pick five notes out of that and make a pentatonic scale, but I wouldn't think of it as a pentatonic scale. Yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. It's, I mean, it's not a pentatonic scale. You, as you said, you can make one out of it. I mean, you could simply you could take out the nine and take out the eleven, and you essentially have the flavor of it. You need the triad, really. One, three, five. We're getting a little echo. So we we need the triad. We need the flatted sixth or the flatted thirteenth, and the dominant seventh would be good to have too. It's an integral part of the scale. But so if you want to make an, a pentatonic scale out of it take out the two, take out the four, and just play a one, three, five, flat six, flat seven, and then eight. And you, that would be the most, in my opinion, the most logical choice. If you wanted to remove two of the notes to make a pentatonic mode out of it. Fantastic. So let's go on the next item. We're going to stay here <laughs> too much. Do you have... In mind another scale that you really like? You I do. do. I know you do. I do. I do. Lydian. Lydian. I love Lydian. So Lydian, for those who don't know, it is a, it's very similar to a major scale. In fact, it contains all the notes of a major scale except for one small but important difference. 
So a major scale, the formula for a major scale is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, that those are the notes of a major scale. Okay, if you if you start on C and you play all the white keys on a piano, you got C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Okay, so that was the scale I showed at the beginning. Okay. Okay. Now, if we take this note here, number four, and we raise it up, so now we have a sharp four. You could call this sharp eleven if you like. Okay, we have one, two, three, sharp four, five, six, seven, eight. What is sharp four? It just means that you take the fourth note of a major scale and you play it one fret higher in sound, okay? So our major scale, if I start on C, so that I just played one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Now, if I take the fourth note, which would be here, F, and I make it F sharp, one fret higher, we get this. And the rest of the scale is the same. G, A, B, C. Now, if you're thinking, oh, that note sounded bad. I don't like that note at all. You will like it, okay? You will. Out of context, you might think, oh, it sounds like a wrong note. It sounds bad. Yeah, out of context, after just hearing the major scale, it could sound like a weird wrong note to you, all right? But in context, which I'll give you the context in a moment, it's going to sound cool. Okay, so... If I play a C chord, this regular old C chord here, and I add, I put my ring finger on fret two of string one, so we got, I'll grab the root note with my pinky now. It's a C major chord with the sharp 11 added, or sharp four. All right, now the reason why I like this scale so much is because it is also, in my opinion, very dramatic, not, not in the pain way that, the painful uh, suffering way that Mixolydian flat sixth is. That's a painful sound, okay? This is emotional, but it's not painful, okay? There's not a lot of pain here, all right? There's a lot of beauty here, in my, in my opinion. So uh, I'm gonna find a track I'll actually play over two tracks. So I've got a little backing track. This is uh, C Lydian. It's mostly just a C chord with the F sharp added. I'll play over a little bit. That's the sharp four right here. There it is. There it is. There it is again. Here it is again. Way up high. There it is. There it is again. So I'm playing the sharp 11 a whole bunch of times all over the place, just goofing around, improvising here. But that's essentially the sound. 
And if Tommaso, if we have time, and I know we're getting a little short, but if we got time, I'd like to play over one more track. It's a much cooler track uh, that uses the Lydian mode with uh, natural minor. So it's, and I'll show you this, these chords when we get to the chord section here, but it's basically a Lydian. And it, so it's an A chord. All right. Essentially, it's, it's more to it than just A. But for right now, let's just call it A. All right. And then C sharp minor. And there's more to this chord than just C sharp minor. But for right now, let's just say it's A and C sharp minor. Now, you could think about this as six to one in C sharp minor. But I tend to think about it as one to three in A Lydian. OK, so let me just play this track real quick. Uh, it's, a, it's a cooler track, all right? So check this out. I'll try and get that Lydian sound everywhere where I can. So I don't want to get carried away and sit here all day, which I would if Tommaso let me because it's fun. But let's just end it there. Uh, it, that sh sharp four, it has a kind of a floating kind of feel to it. Um, it's um, it's just a great sound. I just love it. So yes, <laughs> I think Lydian is one of the best uh, open secrets in a sense. It's like anybody knows that Lydian exists, uh, but. Once you learn how to use it and actually milk the emotion from the sharp four, it's a different thing. It's it's just it's just good. Anyway, let's go on to the chords then, chord and chord progression. I know you have to change guitar. I do. I'm gonna go off camera for just one second to make this. Go, you, you 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 go off camera, change guitar. I had I I filled a couple of questions in the meantime. So let me see, let me see. Ah uh, ha ha ha. So oh well, that's nice. I wish. That naked fret marks. <laughs> okay. Actually, guys, I recommend to everybody to get a guitar without the neck marks just to get used to it. It's it, it's a great exercise. It's a great exercise to get a guitar without fret marks and try to play on that. Uh let me oh well Tommaso, there is an email where I can reach out to you. Yes, that's Tommaso, that's two M one S, T O M M A S O at music theory for guitar.com. Okay. But in general, if you go on music34guitar.com, my website, and you click on contact, it's on the bottom, okay, you can find an email to contact me, okay? Anybody, please, if you need something, contact me, okay? Uh, which takes me also to the next question, which is how to go from practicing soloing on one chord vamps to soloing over a progression. I get lost majorly when chord changes happen. And we could do a long speech about all that. <laughs> but it really depends where you are right now, what you know, what you don't know. Best way is you contact me or contact Thomas, and we can go from there. <laughs> I mean, we have courses, lessons, other things, etc. depending on where you are, depending on what do you need, and uh, we can go from there. But it's hard to answer right now or in a, in a comment on YouTube because we don't know you yet, <laughs> okay? So we don't know what, to, what you need right now. Finally, and I want to mess in the in the frame for this. That's a very important question. Does this top style beard help create these sounds? Well, 
we don't know because we haven't shaved yet. So <laughs> maybe, maybe when we shave, we cannot play anymore. Okay. But we don't have any control experiment here. So we cannot really tell. <laughs> okay. Fantastic. Okay. Tomas, do you have some good chords for us? I do. And, and I've, and most of these are quite easy. Um, so any, if there are people who are, you know, more on the beginner level, uh, this is, this stuff is fairly easy. It's not that hard. Okay. So the first one that I'll show you is um, if you play a power chord here on string five, fret two, okay, so like a B5 chord, okay? And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this finger, for reasons we'll talk about later, I'm going to take this finger off and replace it with the fourth finger, okay? So now you're doing a power chord with these two fingers, all right? Now, there, there's a good reason for this, which we'll get into a little bit later, all right? So now, now that you've got your power chord here, take this finger, which is playing on string four, and put it on string three. Same fret, but now it's string three. So the chord is going to have a B note. Then the so on string five, you're playing the second fret. On string four, it's open. String three, you're playing fourth fret. That's a B. And then string two is open. So we've got two open strings. String four and two are open. All right. So check this out. So this is implying a B minor chord, but it's actually not B minor. There are only two notes here. There are three B notes and one D note, okay? So it's B, D, B, and then B again. Now we can do a lot of cool things with this chord. If, you're got, if you got your guitar in your hand right now, all I'm doing is I'm playing string five, four, three, two, and then going back. going this way and then going this way, okay? Now, take this finger off. Now take your middle finger and put it on string six, fret three. Now we're not, we're not picking string four, or string five anymore. I'm playing six, four, three, two. Those are the string numbers. That's pretty cool. It's it's really easy. This finger never moves. You got this. Here's what's happening in the bass. You got. You can go back to open A if you want, and then start over. And you can pick pick this however you want. You can make up like songs all day long just doing that very very easily all right so there's it's all based on just this move this little power chord moving it over the, this from this string to this string you got some nice open strings they're very cool all right here's a variation on that uh let's go back to our power chord with our ring finger now string three will be open g Kind of like the start of um, a bunch of Metallica songs, Fade to Black, Welcome Home, Welcome Home Sanitarium, uh, the song One. They all start this way, okay? So we've got... Now with your middle finger, we're going to put it on string two, fret three, all right? So we got B, D, or, sorry, F sharp, open G. Then we have D, okay? Check this out. I just picked the middle four strings. Now 
you do the same thing we did earlier, take this finger off, let that be an open A. Now, since this finger is available, we can put it on string six, fret three, play the G note. Let me play this a little bit cleaner. Let me try it again. I added the high E string in there. Uh, what I would sometimes do when goofing around with this is when I drop the B to A, I would change this D note to C sharp second fret this way. I take my middle, my first finger, which is now available, and I put it on string two, fret two. And then, in that case, I can go back, I can go to here, put the middle finger back on, so we've got... There, what I did was I just let, when I put my middle finger on G, I let the second string be open. So we got, we have this happening in the bass. And we have this happening also in, on the top voice. So we got, we got that happening, all right? You could reverse those two voices. So instead of these going, you could have them go in opposite directions. So that means that the second string would start off open. Now second fret of the second string. Now third fret of the second string. So the bass and the melody are going in opposite directions. That's called, called contrary motion. So you can do it either way. And these chords are really not that hard, okay? They're simpler, they're, they're more easy than a bar chord, okay? Pretty easy. Um, let me show you some other cool stuff. Uh, if you play a regular G chord. Sorry, wait, before, before you go ahead, wait. Because. Some people are getting this, some people are not getting it, but that's okay. Guys, the video stays here, okay? It's not that that's the only time you see it, and then once we finish, this vanish into thin hair, and you're not going to see it anymore. The video stays on the on the channel, and I recommend everybody, once we finish here, if there's anything you missed, go and rewatch that part, okay? Sometimes the first, uh, the first time you see those things, they seem much harder than they actually are because you, you just are not used to it. You're just getting too much information at the same time. So if you take a moment, watch it again, you typically get it much better and you realize that the difficulty you thought that was there is actually not there. It's actually much simpler than you thought at first, okay? So anybody who feels discouraged right now, take heart, okay? The video stays there. And again, if you have any questions, you can always write a comment in the video. I'm gonna screenshot it. I'm gonna make more videos on it. So it's not that you are left um, to yourself <laughs> forever, okay? Don't be afraid of asking. There are no stupid questions. We are all learning, and if you're missing some parts here and there, just ask in the chat, in the comments after, okay? So it's, I'm not disappearing either after we finish this video, okay? So if you write a comment there, I'm there. I'm reading them, okay? Just reassuring everybody here. Okay, Tomas, go ahead. All right, cool. Thanks for that, Tommaso. And yeah, that that's right. If, if you guys don't get it the first time, just go back. And just, this is all recorded. Just go back and watch it. It's, it's, these chords are pretty easy, okay? Now, um, next easy little idea here. You guys, I think, all know a G chord. Open G. Okay, everybody kind of know that chord, okay? 
All right, now what I'm going to do is suggest to play this chord a little differently because we're going to, we're going to need to make some fingers available that are currently not available when we play G this way. So what we're going to do is we're going to put our first finger, this one, right here, okay? So you've got your first finger there. We are not going to play string five. So the back of this finger is just going to mute string five. Now we're going to play these two notes, strings one and two, fret three for both of them. And we're going to play the G chord this way. Your middle finger's not doing anything yet. Okay, so play the G this way. So we got G, then we got open D, open G, then we've got D on the second string, fret three, and G on the first string, fret three. Now, we're going to just strum that a little bit. That's just basically a G5 chord. It's just a big power chord. It doesn't look like a power chord, but it actually is a power chord. Okay, it's just G5 because there's no B notes in here. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take these two fingers and we're going to move them. So this finger is going to go up two frets to fret five. This finger is going to go up only one fret. So it's going to look like this. The first finger stays the same on fret three. So fret three, fret four, fret five. Okay. Now, if you want to know what this chord is, we've got G, D, and G down here. So that's G five. Got the root and the fifth. This is the flatted sixth. It is not a sharp five. It is flatted six. How do we know it's not sharp five? Because we've already got five right there. So it cannot be sharp five. This is flat six. Okay. This note is nine. It's the second uh, note of, this, of a G scale. Okay. So we have what's called a six nine chord or G, technically it's G flat six nine. So you might see it written, you might see it written this way. Okay, that's a six, flat G, flat six, nine. Okay, there. All right, that's typically how it would be written in this context, okay? So we've got, so check out, check, check out this sound. We go from this G. This chord is not hard to play. It, it's really quite simple. It's very comfortable for the hand. Now we're going to do something that looks hard. I promise you it's not hard. If you hold your hand the right way, this is an easy chord. Okay. When I show it to you, you're going to think, whoa, that looks hard. It's not hard at all. Okay. My fingers are very short. My pinky finger is not even two inches long. That's short. Okay. So if I can play this chord, all of you can play this chord. All right. And the chord is this. So we're going to put our first finger, keep it on the low G, and we're going to put our little finger on fret seven of the high E string. Okay. So it's just this. I'm not, if, if you're thinking, whoa, you're stretching your fingers. No, I'm not. I'm not. My, I'm not. Can you do this? Can you do this? Take your, here, do this, guys. Take your hand like this out in front of you and do this. That's what I'm doing. Okay. This. Bring it to the guitar. There it is. Okay. There's my thumb. Okay. It's pretty easy. Now, just like the other chords, string five is not being played. It's being muted by the back of this finger. Okay. So we want low E string, open D, open G open B and then the high B. So now we want this. This is just simply a G chord. It's exactly the same as this. It's just a different voicing of G. It's just G, B, and D. That's all it is. It's just a G chord. Nothing special. Now when we put the chords together,
it's a very nice sound. It's pretty easy, okay? And it's just all different versions of a G chord. There's G5, there's G flat six and nine, six nine chord. This is G triad. And to make this sound cool, someone uh, said that it says, um, it sounds haunting. I guess it does right here. But that's partially be, it's partially the chord and it's partially how I'm playing it. So. You notice that I let it ring out and I also did not hit it as hard as I hit these. So I'm bringing the dynamic level down and that adds to that, that feel. I'm also giving vibrato to the whole chord. But I, this guitar has a floating bridge. This is a Floyd, Floyd Rose, okay? And I'm just taking my fist, and I'm fisting the bridge. There's no whammy bar here. Take the whammy bar, throw it away. I don't want whammy bars. They get in the way. You can do it like this. And that gives the whole chord vibrato. Kind of sounds like a chorus effect. That's all I'm doing. There you have it. Just making sure we don't miss this one. Where does the hunting chord come from? What scale? Great. So it's a scale that we've already talked about. <laughs> so we, uh, the basis, the root here is G. Okay, we have a G triad for the chord. So that means we have a root, a third, and a fifth. Okay. We know that here we've got a ninth. This is two. So, so here, let's write it out. Here's what we got. We got a root, a third, and a fifth. These three notes are contained in this part of the chord, the triad. The ninth is right here. Two and nine are the same. If you don't know that, remember that. Two and nine are the same thing. They're the same note. Okay. This is A. That's A in, in this over this chord. Okay. Here we have flat six. Okay. Someone earlier was asking about making how if you could make a pentatonic scale out of mixolydian flat six. And what I said was you can take out the two and the four, and that would be a pretty common way to make a pentatonic scale. But here we've taken out the four and the flat. What's missing in this chord is the four and the flat seven. So you could uh, use this as a, another version of a pentatonic scale for this chord. But this is essentially fifth mode of melodic minor. We're just missing four and we're missing flat seven. But that's where that really uh, comes from. So you could play the fifth mode of melodic minor over all of this. And you'd be right in key and it would sound, it would sound great. And you have comments about that this sounds like a Led Zeppelin tune. Yes. And it's, and it's true. It's 10 years gone. <laughs> and it, uh, it's not the same chord progression, but in 10 years gone, uh, Led Zeppelin, in the slow part, Led Zeppelin uses exactly this scale. So, yes. <laughs> I don't think they're the first to use this sound. Maybe in the rock, in the rock context, they were the first, but definitely a scale was used before. So, I mean, the scale is all over the, the Russian school of romantic music, end of 19th century, so it's there. And uh, there's another comment here I don't want to miss. It's, it's the flat six that gives the G the scary sound. Yes, but not only. It's the flat sixth, but it's also the flat sixth against the ninth, because the flat six is a flat. Okay, I don't know if you guys can see me. The flat sixth is the, is the E flat, sorry, in, in G. But we play it against the nine, the, the ninth, which is an A, and that's a, a tritone, and that's... So you have those two notes that work against the G, and one is interpreted by your brain as the ninth, which is a very nice note. By itself it will sound this way. It's a very nice, mellow note. But you have also the... 
the flat sixth, which is a dramatic note. And when you put them together, those notes are kind of in conflict, okay? It, they're not really punching each other like a semitone would, but they are not even friends either. I mean, there's some tension between them. And when you hear this tension, with the G on the bottom that supports both of them, that's that's kind of conflict, gives this kind of what you call scary sound, okay? Which is a pretty good description, actually, okay? So, and that's the explanation on this. Uh, it looked like Dorian on paper, not really, actually, because Dorian would have a sharper sixth, not a minor, and, and a minor third, so it's kind of the opposite, okay? Okay, uh, yeah. Here's a comment I want to address because this, this comes up for me now and then. It's, it's easier following along with a keyboard. Then you don't have to worry about fingering since it's all in a throw except the flats. First of all, you have to finger things in a keyboard too. <laughs> okay. I think people always forget that. Okay, But if you actually do this on a keyboard, you have to pick what, what finger you use. And it's not as obvious as this first. But the other thing is that, okay, you do this on a keyboard. I get it that the, the notes are in, in, in a line and some people find it easier, but try to change key and then change key and then change key. And you'll find yourself doing a lot of mental math on which one is the ninth, which one is the flat sixth, which one is the... On the guitar, you grab those, those, those shapes and you, and, and you move them up and down. <laughs> okay, so it's... it's uh, again, on the guitar, I can take this chord. I want to do it a B chord. I just move it up. I want to do an E flat chord. I just move it up, okay? Which also allows me to do some easy planing. Planing is when you take the same thing and you move it around. Okay. Do this on a piano. Let me know how much time it takes. <laughs> okay. The thing is this, it's it's not that it's easier on the piano. It, it's, a, it's a different trade-off. Okay, we have, a, we have specific things that are easier on guitar, and there are specific things that are easier on the piano. The problem is that most of music theory is taught by people who have in mind the piano. So it's easy for them because they point exactly, do exactly the easy thing on the piano. They don't do the hard stuff on the piano, okay, especially in an introductory book or course. So whenever you see those intro stuff and you do them on guitar, to you, a guitar player, it looks like it's super impossible. But if we made a course, okay, <laughs> if we made a course that is made specifically for guitar, then we would do the easy stuff on guitar, <laughs> for, for guitar, and it would sound different than a piano course, and it would make, be more, much more comprehensible for guitar players. And I, I, I do have those courses, and Thomas has lessons about all these. So again, call us, <laughs> okay? And we, and we hook you up with that, okay? No problem, <laughs> okay? Makes sense. But... <clears throat> Uh, uh, we have had other, other other questions, but uh, some of them I actually don't know how to answer. I mean, I, is this the Chuck uh, Sheldiner scale? I have no idea. <laughs> okay, don't, Tomás, you have any any idea? No idea. <laughs> okay. okay, it's okay. But any, anyway, so um, take it easy. I, I mean, on the on the guitar, it's easy to see the shapes. So use the guitar for what it's good for, essentially. Then, of course, you can expand, but. If you think of the guitar as a, a bad piano, then it's just a bad piano, okay? But think of the, of the guitar as a guitar, and many things that looks hard on a piano or looks impossible at the beginning becomes very possible. So, again, come back to this video, see exactly how Tomas is fingering all these. It's much easier than it looks at first. Tomas, I think we are going all, a bit beyond on time, so I think we should get to the next step. And the next step is, um, I'm going to introduce it this way. People were looking at, at you soloing before, and many of them were wondering how you make those scales sound this way, okay? And uh, I think a, a good part of it is not just what you, I mean, it's what you play. I mean, those, those notes are important, what note, tension notes you're using, the sharp four, the flat six, etc. But at the same time, you have pretty good phrasing in there and you know when to, where to put that vibrato, you know your timing and all these kind of things. So I know you have an e-book about, an e-guide about all of that. Would you like to talk to us about it a, a moment? Sure, sure. Yeah, it's a, it's a free e-book. You guys can download it, um, you know, for free. You can get it right now. It's just immediate download. And it's the secret to adding fire and emotion to any guitar lick 
even if you can't play guitar fast yet, because this what you're going to find in this ebook is not about building speed or doesn't require you to have a lot of dexterity or speed. I have other resources for that stuff. Uh, but this is essentially how to take the technique you already have, okay, uh, the, the, the speeds you have, the, the dexterity you have, and get more out of the notes that you play. So when I practice guitar, um, the primary thing that I focus on isn't, you know, perfecting techniques or, or getting them to higher and higher levels. What I primarily focus on is refining the phrasing, trying to make the notes, particularly the important notes of a phrase, um, sing more, okay, and make them make the notes sustain more, make them have more emotion than they would if I just, you know, did that. That doesn't that doesn't say a whole lot. So there's more to phrasing than you know just slides and bends and uh, vibrato and things like that. It's about how you apply vibrato, when you apply vibrato, different kinds of vibrato. Same thing with string bends or slides or other phrasing elements. And this will help you to play what you're already playing with more fire and emotion. That is the, the intent here of this. So you can go ahead and download it. It's totally free. No strings attached. No string attached, which is, it's always fun to say no string attached to a guitar player. <laughs> okay, I have something for you two guys. I have my own free e-guide. Okay, this is 18 tips specific for pentatonic um, scale. You guys know the pentatonic scale, the typical blue scale. It, it, simpler than the scale we've seen today, okay. Um, of course, some of those tips can be very useful for all, the, for all the scales we've seen today, but in this book, I tackle specifically the pentatonic scale because the pentatonic scale has only five notes. And so it's deceptively simple. Okay, you think you have only five notes, how hard can it be? But then you listen to the masters of the pentatonic scale, okay? You listen to, I don't know, Clapton, Santana, all those people, okay? And they make it sound, they will sound different. They use the same five notes, they will sound different. They have a personality shine through those five notes. So we need to understand what's happening there, okay? And if you observe all of them, now, that's the thing. People are like, man, it's their natural talent. I don't know, I mean, I, maybe, but personally, I have no natural talent. Some of the best players I know have zero natural talent either. We just learned, okay? So this ebook here, it's, which it is, <laughs> this ebook here, okay? It's the, mm, the result of 20 years of me obsessively observing those people, the good, the good players, and trying to distill what they do into little manageable tricks. And those tricks are really small, you read one of them and you can apply them immediately, okay? And when you put them together, they sound uh, different and usually better. Uh, I had people telling me that they didn't expect something so small and simple to give them so much freedom of movement and expression. So, and it's completely free. Link is down the amusedityforguitar.com slash pentatonic dash guitar dot html. Okay, get it. Again, no string attached like the mess was saying, always funny to say, completely free. Very good, and let's get back with Tomas. So, Tomas, thank you for the tricks today. I mean, we, I, I think people are going to have a lot of fun, and I want to stress to people that, again, first of all, some of those things are much easier than they look at first. They look complex, they sound different, but they are not technically hard. So you guys go back to the video, rewatch those parts, no problem. I also want to tell those people, I mean, that's what, that's what I'm thinking you're going to say, but you can confirm me, is that you guys can use this stuff on your song, right? They're, they're not, we, we didn't copyright yeah, I don't, all this. I don't own these chords. Yeah. Okay, we, we didn't copyright all these, okay? So it's not that you now you're going to use a song and then later we're going to come like Patent Shark suing all of you for your song. This is not going to happen, okay? I'm saying it here. You guys can use those chords, those scales in your songs. You can recycle those ideas. And also because it's impossible to do exactly the same thing. You guys are gonna take this idea and it's gonna be your own things just because you are doing it, okay? So don't worry about that. Uh, take this stuff, make your own music. Tomas, any any last, um, any, any parting words for the, for our audience? Yeah, just, you know, experiment. The, the little examples that were given, they're just 
they're just examples, guys. They're, there's there's nothing special about what I showed you. Okay, they're just examples. So the goal for you, at least in my opinion, is you know, let me put it this way: if I was teaching a student, okay, if you're my student and you know you're at one of my events or I'm teaching you online or whatever, one of the things that I would say is don't don't learn everything note for note and then copy it and think, oh, that's the lesson. I'm done. That's not the lesson. Okay. That's not even remotely the lesson. It's here's an idea to get you started. I'm playing a little. Okay. What can you do with it? That's the lesson. How can you express? Are you going to strum it? Are you going to pick through it? What other things might you add to it? What melody notes might you play on top of it? If you were improvising or whatever. Um, can you change the rhythm, change the time signature, change the feel, uh, the dynamic range? Experiment, experiment. I, the examples I showed you aren't the only way or the best way to play those things. There are The more that you experiment, the more that you will grow as a musician, the better your uh, improvisation will get and the better your songwriting will get. Because you're not just trying to copy stuff note for note. That's the problem with, now I'm getting on a little rant here, but that's the problem when people want to go and learn tab, you know, and and learn songs. I guess that's cool to entertain yourself, but you guys know you're not really getting better by doing that, right? You, you guys know that, right? Okay. I mean, your favorite guitar players, they didn't go to the internets and get a bunch of tabs and then, you know, learn stuff note for note and then, you know, get a record deal. That's that, that, That's not how it worked. Okay. They experimented. Okay. Exactly as I, th I think, in my opinion, you should. That's the main lesson here. What can you do with it? Experiment. Exactly. It's, it's not the tabs that are wrong because, because the same would happen if everything would be notated in a different way, like standard notation. It's just blindly copying it without understanding. That's the thing. Okay. Uh, which, by the, by the way, is not a dig on classical players. They do something different with their instruments. So that's a different thing. But the thing is for us, electric guitar players that we want to make music improvise etc we need to experiment with this stuff otherwise it just stays there okay the, the things need to come alive and the only thing that, that to come alive you have to try and get something wrong change something make see how it works for you that's the thing okay okay guys i, th I hope you got some good ideas some starting point okay and I hope you're going to make some good music. If you make good music with that, or if you make bad music with that, whatever, okay? But I would like to hear it, okay? Send send, send, send it over, okay? I, we, I can always comment on that. It's not a problem. So, and with all these, thank you, Tomas, for all the tricks. Thank you for thank our you. audience for being here. Thank you, guys. And until next time, enjoy.